Hi, I am Todd Wood. I'm president of Core Academy of Science. We're an organization interested in creationist understandings of the world, and I am especially interested in hominin fossils, and this is Fossil Focus. For this Fossil Focus, I have here uh, a model, a three-dimensional printing of Nariacotomy Boy. This skull here is just part of what was discovered back in the 80s. It was originally found in 1984 uh, by a team led by Alan Walker and Richard Leakey. They were working on the west side of Lake Turkana, which is in northwestern Kenya. Uh, there had been a number of discoveries made on the east side, uh, and so they, would, they went over to the west side to see if there was anything there, and sure enough, ta-da, small fragment of skull was found, and eventually uh, that yielded over four years of digging uh, an entire skeleton, or very close to an entire skeleton. The skull was found in 70 different pieces, and uh, you fit back together like a nice puzzle piece. The entire uh, dentition, all of the teeth are present, and we can see that there are no wisdom teeth, uh, which would indicate that this, one of the indications that this was a very young person when they died. Um, Specifically, the estimate is about 11 or 12. And the bones, and this is, I think, really interesting, the bones of this uh, fossil, the long bones, were found oriented, preferentially, uh, perpendicular to one another, which would indicate that the skeleton decomposed, the body decomposed, in probably a shallow water setting where the current was able to orient the long bones uh, over time so that they would be either perpendicular to the water flow or parallel to the water flow. All of this suggests that Nary Cotterby boy uh, died. He fell into a stream somehow. His body fell into a stream uh, and decomposed. And the bones were then spread out in several square meters, but nothing too much that you couldn't put them sort of back together again and realize that this is the single skeleton of a single individual. Now the discovery of Nary Academy Boy confirmed uh, the presence of something like Homo erectus in East Africa. So this is a model of uh, a fossil found on the east side of Lake Turkana. This is 3733. Uh, and it, is, it was uh, associated with the name Homo erectus when it was discovered. And the discovery of the similar Nariacotomy boy confirmed, presumably, that these are, in fact, all one species living there in East Africa. Initially, researchers associated the fossils like 3733 and Nariacotomy boy with Homo erectus, which at the time was primarily known as a species from Asia. And so ever since then, there have been some people who have claimed that, in fact, what you find in Africa is a different species altogether, and they usually call it Homo ergaster. Or people would just refer to it as Homo erectus in the wide sense, um, African Homo erectus versus Asian Homo erectus. I'm not sure that the debate is the, all that interesting to me as a creationist, though, uh, because I'm mostly interested in whether Nary Academy Boy and associated African Homo erectus material is actually human. So let's compare to a human skeleton and see what we find. So here we have a model of a human skeleton, which we could use to compare this 3D print of Nary Academy Boy to. And what you can see, there's some pretty striking differences here. You can see, for example, here on the bottom of the mandible here, the modern Homo sapiens has a part that sort of juts forward. We call that the chin. And you can see on Nary Academy Boy, there is no such part. The 
the, the mandible slopes directly backward. You can also see that the modern human Homo sapiens has a massive forehead, and very little right here in terms of a brow ridge, which is not what we see in Nary Academy Boy. His brain case is actually about two thirds the size of a modern human's on average, and he has a pretty well-developed brow ridge. It's hard to see because, of course, the, these pieces were not found, but you can see the beginnings of it here on this edge and here on that edge. Uh, and so he would have had a much bigger brow ridge and a much smaller brain and not much of a forehead. You can also see uh, the modern human here tends to have a face that's pretty straight up and down, whereas Neri Academy Boy clearly has a pretty big slant to his face. His mouth sticks way out from uh, the plane of the vertical plane, right? So what do these differences mean for our creationist understanding of Nary Academy Boy? Well, actually, the differences in the skull are the most divergent from modern people. If you look below the neck, Nary Academy Boy's skeleton is extremely similar, mostly to modern Homo sapiens. Not exactly, but it's much closer below the neck than it is above the neck. The skull is much more divergent than the rest of the skeleton, which leads most creationists to assume that Nary Economy Boy, and in fact, Homo erectus in general, are, in, are humans. Different sorts of humans, of course. They're not exactly like we are today, and reveals some differences that require us to propose models of how genetically there might be these features uh, produced by a human genome. But nevertheless, uh, we would all be comfortable in affirming that Homo erectus, African Homo erectus, at the very least, Nary Academy Boy, is in fact a human being made in the image of God, just like us.